Also I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him, the angels of God being used to ensure prophecy comes to pass as it is this day, and now I will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh, in the future is since, beginning with the first world war and ending at the woe of the fifth trumpet, when they become the lion of Daniel chapter 7, and the fourth king of the south, that is to say, Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh, together as the lion in the one world system shall be richer than they all and by his strength through his riches he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia symbolized by the he-goat we saw in Daniel chapter 8 Grecia was the type but ultimately the he-goat is symbolic of the shadow government of the Kenites that goat fig nation who through the four hidden dynasties formulate the one world system of Revelation 13 that comes into being at the woe of the fifth trumpet and a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will and when he shall stand up his kingdom shall be broken the great horn of the he goat which is the united nations and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven which always means the five month long hour of temptation this is when the four notable ones of daniel chapter 8 verse 8 emerge that is to say the lion the bear the leopard which is what the he goat will become at that time and daniel's fourth beast which is made up of satan and his angels and not to his posterity nor according to his dominion which he ruled for his kingdom which is the united nations shall be plucked up broken that is to say even for others besides those the four beasts of daniel chapter 7 which is the one world political system of revelation 13 having seven heads which are seven mountains the seven continents of the planet earth and the king of the south shall be strong and one of his princes ephraim which is the british commonwealth ruled over by the house of windsor and he shall be strong above him and have dominion his dominion shall be a great dominion his seed shall become a multitude of nations being the prophecy concerning Ephraim as you can see in Genesis chapter 48 verse 19 and in the end of years they shall join themselves together for the king's daughter of the south that is to say the scepter of Judah which is now in London England the house of Saxe Coburg and Gotha now being called the house of Windsor shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement the treaty of London in 1915 between England and Tsarist Russia before a became the Soviet Union, France and Italy taking part in the treaty as well, Tsar Nicholas II being of the royal seed of Judah as well, the cousin of King George V, the King of England, but she, the king's daughter, which means the scepter of Judah, shall not retain the power of the arm in Tsarist Russia, which is the first king of the north, that is to say, neither shall he stand nor his arm. Tsar Nicholas would be murdered in the Bolshevik Revolution, but she, the scepter of Judah in Tsarist Russia, shall be given up, and they that brought her the Romanov dynasty and he that begat her in other words the Soviets would throw God out of Russia so to speak creating an atheistic dictatorship and he that strengthened her Christ that is to say the Romanovs were a Christian dynasty of the king line of Judah but as it's written in Amos chapter 2 verse 1 Moab burned the bones of the king of Edom into lime Ammon and Moab being symbolic of the two wings of communism in the ultimate future sense but out of a branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate which shall come with a mighty army and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north and shall deal against them and shall prevail in the Bolshevik revolution when the first king of the north which was Tsarist Russia was destroyed and replaced with the USSR the second king of the north out of a branch of her roots meaning the Bolshevik revolution which was orchestrated by the Kenites from Wall Street through the United States which came from the United Kingdom and shall also carry captives into Egypt which is symbolic of bondage their God with their princes and with their precious vessels of silver and gold and shall continue more years than the king of the north so the king of the south shall come into his kingdom and shall return into his own land signifying the end of world war one so here we see the end of the description of the first king of the south the united kingdom and the british commonwealth during world war one Ephraim being one of the horns on the ram we saw in daniel chapter eight next we'll see the second king of the south germany which is judah in the second world war and remember the result of the first world war was the league of nations and the result of the second world war was the united nations which is the great horn of the he goat of daniel chapter 8 but his son shall be stirred up and shall assemble a multitude of forces and one shall certainly come and overflow and pass through then shall he return and be stirred up even to his fortress and the king of the south shall be moved with collar germany being the notable horn of the he goat in daniel chapter 8 not the great horn but the notable horn used by the king 
Danites in the World Wars to bring about the great horn of the he-goat at the end of World War II, the United Nations. You'll see this word collar in Daniel chapter 8, verse 7 as well. And remember the last verse of Isaiah chapter 9 where it says, Manasseh Ephraim and Ephraim Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah. And so it was in both world wars. And the king of the south shall be moved with collar and shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of the north, Soviet Russia. And he shall set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. And when he hath taken away the multitude, his heart shall be lifted up, and he shall cast down many ten thousands, but he shall not be strengthened by it. And you can read about the aftermath of World War II in the book of Obadiah. The king of the south in 1945 becoming Manasseh, which is the United States, who was used by the Kenites to bring about the United Nations that same year, which was when the third trumpet of Revelation chapter 8 began to sound. And in 1948, Kenite occupied Israel came into being, which is when the fourth trumpet began to sound. 21 years later, in 1969, the fifth trumpet began to sound, five being grace in biblical numerics. And in my opinion, Russia's entry into Syria in 2015 is where Daniel chapter 11, verse 13, fast forwards to. And this is all gone into in greater detail in the Daniel 11 hypothesis on biblicalresearchlabs.com. For the king of the north shall return the third king of the north, which is the Russian Federation, and shall set forth a multitude greater than the former, and shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and with much riches. And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south, the United States, at this point in the chapter, the other horn of the ram back in Daniel chapter 8. Also the robbers of thy people, the he-goat of Daniel chapter 8, shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, but they shall fall. Those who claim to be of Judah and are not, but do lie, that goat fig nation, who through their four hidden dynasties operate out of all the nations of the world, twisting reality in the minds of the biblically illiterate. It's a Kenite occupied planet in all reality, so don't deceive yourself by focusing exclusively on one geographic location. So the king of the north, the Russian Federation, shall come and cast up a mount and take the most fenced cities, not just in Syria, but globally also, with communistic atheism by stealth through politics and the left right paradigm symbolized by Ammon and Moab. And also at this time, we see what will become the bear of Daniel chapter 7 formulating, which is the Ezekiel 38 Confederacy. And the arms of the South shall not withstand neither his chosen people, the elected officials Americans think will save them from globalism, you could even say, neither shall there be any strength to withstand. The New World Order, as it's called, cannot be stopped because it's the one world political system of Revelation 13, which we'll see described in detail beginning with verse 21. But first, we rewind in verses 16 through 19 for a closer look at the League of Nations, which provided the skeletal structure for the United Nations, which we'll see in verse 20, which will eventually provide the skeletal structure for the actual one world government. We'll see from verses 21 onward to the end of the chapter. But he that shall come against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him, and he shall stand in the glorious land which by his hands shall be consumed. Article 22 of the Covenant of the League of Nations, paving the way for Kenite occupied Israel, the glorious land being that same geographic location. He shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and upright ones with him. The Balfour Declaration leading to the British Mandate. Thus shall he do, and he, that is to say Ephraim, via the British Mandate, shall give him the he-goat, the daughter of women, which is Jerusalem, corrupting her, but she shall not stand on his side, neither before him. After this shall he turn his face toward the isles, and shall take many. The nations who join the League of Nations would later join the United Nations, and at the woe of the fifth trumpet will become the one world political system, the new world order. But a prince, for his own behalf, shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease. This first attempt at a global government would fail, in other words, when World War II broke out in 1939. Without his own reproach, he shall cause it to turn upon him. Then shall he turn his face toward the fort of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. With the covenant of the League of Nations originating at the Paris Peace Conference, what happened to France during World War II illustrates what a failure this attempt at so-called world peace was, but it did provide the skeletal structure for the next step toward one worldism, the United Nations, the great horn of the he-goat written of in Daniel chapter 8. Then shall stand up in his estate one who sends a raiser of taxes to better translate the verse in the glory of the kingdom, but within few days he shall be destroyed, which is the same word in the Hebrew as broken in Daniel chapter 8 verse 8, neither in anger 
injured nor in battle. A few days meaning a few years. The Paris Climate Agreement being brought about by the United Nations going into effect in 2016. The ultimate eventuality being a global carbon tax, a raiser of taxes. So this fixes the time frame in my opinion. But the Great Horn, which is the United Nations, will be broken after which the four beasts of Daniel chapter 7 emerge at the woe of the fifth trumpet. When Satan and his angels, who are Daniel's fourth beast, are cast to earth, Satan being the vile person of Daniel chapter 11 verse 21, not appearing as Antichrist until verse 31, and in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries, the he-goat becoming the leopard at this time, and this is how Satan is the prince of Grecia, as we saw in Daniel chapter 10 verse 20, standing up in the estate of the one who sent the razor of taxes, who came from Grecia, so to speak, which means of the he-goat, that is to say of the devil, the dragon, who is Satan, being who gives the first beast of Revelation 13 his power and his seat and great authority. And after the deadly wound is when Satan becomes the prince of the kingdom of Persia, as we saw him called in Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, when most Christians begin worshiping Satan instead of Christ, Persia being the type of the Christian nations in this chapter, as well as Daniel chapter 8. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. Covenant. Satan being who confirms the covenant with many for one week, as you can see in the last verse of Daniel chapter 9. Daniel's 70th week, which was seven years, but has been shortened to five months. The 70 evenings we saw in Daniel chapter 8 being the last half of the hour of temptation, which in this chapter begins in verse 31. Verses 21 through 30 being the first two and a half months, the woe of the fifth trumpet. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, and he shall come up and become strong with a small people. The stones worn smooth, which are the Kenites who come from the false rock, and that word flatteries we saw in verse 21 even means as smooth stones were used for lots when you break it back to the root word using your strongest concordance. And he shall enter peaceably upon the fattest places of the province and he shall do that which his fathers which means his predecessors have not done, nor his father's fathers. He'll succeed where the League of Nations and the United Nations failed. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea, he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. The first two and a half months being when the gnar, swarmer, and devourer stages of Satan's fallen angel locust army transpire, setting most Christians up for the spiritual kill at 666 when Satan appears as Antichrist, which we'll see beginning with verse 31. That's when the fourth and final stage of the locust army begins, the consumer stage, after the deadly wound, and he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south, which is the lion of Daniel chapter 7, Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh, with a great army, the fallen angel locust army, being an army of deception. And remember, the ten fallen angel kings will be reigning as kings for the entire five-month-long hour of temptation, with the beast, which is a general term for Satan, both before and after he appears as Antichrist at the woe of the sixth trumpet, right after the deadly wound, at the end of the woe of the fifth trumpet. In Revelation chapter 17, that is to say, the beast there is a general term for Satan, and the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army, but he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him, yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. And this word slain, as you can see in your strongest concordance, means deadly wounded, and both of these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, the king of the south and the king of the north, that is to say the Christian nations, which are the lion, and the non-Christian nations, which are are the bear, and they shall speak lies at one table, trying to diplomatically heal the deadly wound, evidently, but it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. It's Satan's appearance as Antichrist at 666 that heals the wound, so to speak, and that's when it goes from being a global political system to a global religious system. At the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, then shall he return to his own land with great riches to appear as Antichrist in Jerusalem, and his heart shall be against the whole covenant, Christianity itself, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land, the land of Israel being called his land because it's the land of his children, the Kenites, ever since 1948. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, which is symbolic of Christianity, but it shall not be as the former, that is to say politically, during the beginning of the five months, or as the latter, violently, when he sends the Ezekiel 38 confederacy against the mountains of Israel at the end of the five months, which is when the true Christ Christ returns with the army
armies of heaven, for the ships of Chittim shall come against him, and with the 1,260 days of the testimony of the two witnesses, who are most likely Moses and Elijah, being shortened to 75 days, their prophesying begins before the 70 evenings we read of in Daniel chapter 8, which are the two and a half months from the sixth trumpet to the seventh trumpet. Therefore he shall be grieved and return to the land of Israel to appear as Antichrist, as we'll see in the next verse, and have indignation against the Holy Covenant, so shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant in Jerusalem when he appears as Antichrist at 666 in the midst of Daniel's 70th week, which is now five months, as you can see in verse 31. And this is when he goes from being the prince of Grecia to the prince of the kingdom of Persia, as we saw in Daniel chapter 10. An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate, when all six trumpets of deception are sounding at the same time, when the desolator spoken of by the prophet Daniel appears as the false Christ, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt with flatteries the covenant with many of Daniel 9.27, that is to say, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Those of the 7,000 Zadok are 232 of that number, possibly being the only ones not deceived at 666 initially are delivered up just as we saw a type of in Daniel chapter 3 and it's at that time the Holy Spirit speaks through them bringing the 144,000 as well as whosoever will out of the deception whereby they can repent and be grafted back onto God's family tree which is the tree of life the many membered body of the true Christ causing the same chain reaction you can read of in the book of Acts and they that understand among the people shall instruct many looking back to the seed planting prior to the five months yet they that is to say those who were instructed shall fall by the sword and by flame and by captivity and by spoil many days they'll die spiritually because of the deception coming out of satan's mouth and out of the mouths of his fallen angel locust army in his fourth and final stage the consumer stage but again many will come out of the confusion which is what babylon means when they hear what the holy spirit says through those of the zadok when they're delivered up the 144,000, as well as whosoever will some of which being delivered up also, and the chain reaction continues. Now when they shall fall, they shall be holpen with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries, which again means as smooth stones were used for lots, the help being the help that comes from the words of the Holy Spirit through those delivered up. And as it's written in Hosea chapter 13 verse 9, O Israel, which is Christianity, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me, that is to say God the Father, through the Lord Jesus Christ, the true Christ, is thine help. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge them and to make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed the 144,000 having only received the seed of the seal of God will fall at 666 to the deception but then when those of the 7,000 or 232 of that number possibly are delivered up and the Holy Spirit speaks through them in the true Pentecostal tongue understood in every language the seal of God comes to fruition within the minds of the 144,000 springing forth in their forehead because of the latter rain that is the pure truth of God out of heaven. They repent being brought back to life spiritually speaking. And this is the meaning of Ezekiel 37 with the valley which was full of dry bones that stood up on their feet and became an exceeding great army. The 144,000 as well as whosoever will hearken to the voice of the Holy Spirit and the king which is the king of Babylon of the end time Satan in his role of Antichrist shall do according to his will and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god as you can also see in second thessalonians chapter 2 and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods claiming even to be god when he's really that old serpent called the devil and satan with two horns like a lamb but he'll speak as a dragon because he is the dragon satan himself instead of christ which is what antichrist means neither shall he regard the god of his fathers those that came before him as we read of earlier nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all, pride within himself being the reason Satan fell in the first world age, when he received the death sentence, as you can see in Ezekiel 28, becoming the son of perdition, the only one sentenced to perish as an individual, with his fallen angels later being sentenced to perish as a group, but in his estate, letting you know that he's now appeared in his role of Antichrist, beginning with verse 31, shall he honor the God of forces, that is to say himself, he'll magnify himself above all with his 
image being transmitted throughout the world at that time. The image of the beast you can read of in Revelation chapter 13. And a god, lowercase g, whom his fathers, which means his predecessors, knew not, shall he honor with gold and silver. Symbolic of the lion and the bear, as you can see within the image of Daniel chapter 2. And with precious stones and pleasant things. Satan being the false rock called the king of Tyrus in Ezekiel chapter 28. Tyrus means rock, claiming to be the chief cornerstone, but he's really the false messiah. The natural branches of his family tree being also the stones worn smooth that come from the fake rock, the false Christ. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange god during the 70 evenings wherein he's the king of Babylon of the end times, reigning over his one world religious system that comes into being at 666, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, himself that is to say, and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain, along with his ten fallen angel kings you can read of in Daniel chapter 7, where Satan's role of Antichrist is called the little horn, with a mouth speaking great words against the Most High by claiming to be Christ's return. But the true Christ does not return at all until the woe of the seventh trumpet, and all who come out of the confusion, which is what Babylon means before the seventh angel sounds, take part in the first resurrection into eternal life. Otherwise, they'll have to wait until the thousand years are finished and stand against Satan then, otherwise they'll be blotted out in the lake of fire, which is the second death. And at the time of the end of the five-month-long hour of temptation, that is to say, shall the king of the south, which at this point in the chapter means all who will be standing against Satan and his one world system. The king of the south, as in those who are waiting for the true Christ to return, shall push at him, they'll stand against the Antichrist, and the king of the north shall come against him, the king of the south, that is to say, the Ezekiel 38 confederacy will come against those rebelling against the one world system like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships as you can see in Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 the battle of the valley of Haman Gog at the very end of the hour of temptation when the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet and he the true Christ upon his return shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over Christ being the true Passover lamb who returns with the armies of heaven who are the rest of the seven thousand Zadok who lived and died throughout the centuries he that is to say the true Christ shall enter also into the glorious land which is Jerusalem where the battle of Armageddon takes place and many countries shall be overthrown and here many means all Christ being that stone that smites the image of Daniel chapter 2 upon his feet destroying Satan's one world system as well as his role of Antichrist as you can see in Revelation chapter 19 verse 20 but these shall escape out of his hand out of the hand of the king of the south Jacob that is to say also known as Israel the true Christian nation which is not of this world even Edom and Moab and the chief which is Rosh in the Hebrew of the children of Ammon Esau breaks Jacob's yoke from his neck when he shall escape out of his hand at the seventh trumpet when all flesh is done away with Esau being symbolic of the flesh man hence the communistic atheism which is humanism Jacob whose name was Israel being symbolic of the spiritual man those who believe upon the true Christ all flesh being destroyed at the seventh trumpet when Edom is destroyed from being a nation forever. It's only when Esau is destroyed from being a nation that the yoke of Jacob is broken from his neck and he escapes out of Jacob's hand. Every stitch of Genesis 27 verses 39 and 40 being a curse upon all who are against Christ. When it shall be that Esau shall fight in the battle of the valley of Haman Gog, he shall break Jacob's yoke from off his neck because that's when all flesh is destroyed, Edom being symbolic of the flesh man, but their souls will be prolonged until the thousand years are finished as we know from Daniel chapter 7 verses 11 and 12 Moab and Ammon being mentioned here because they symbolize the two wings of atheistic communism humanism that is to say which will be destroyed whenever all flesh is destroyed he which is the true Christ at the seventh trumpet shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver those who were still part of the lion and the bear the gold and silver on the image of Daniel 2 symbolizes you could even say and over all the precious things of Egypt pointing toward Isaiah chapter 19 verses 19 and 20 Christ shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries which means all the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape Jerusalem being called spiritually both Sodom and Egypt in Revelation chapter 11 but when the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever as you can also see in Revelation chapter 11 and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps at the steps of the king of the south as part of the Ezekiel
Ezekiel 38 Confederacy, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya being part of the company assembled unto Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, the steps being the entrance to North America, which is Alaska, where the Battle of the Valley of Haman Gog transpires, which is northeast of Jerusalem, where the Battle of Armageddon takes place, two separate battles that happen at the same time when the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet. But tidings out of the east and out of the north, that's northeast, shall trouble him, Satan, that is to say, who will be in Jerusalem at that time. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many in the battle of Armageddon that you can read of in Revelation chapter 16 in the seventh vial when the true Christ returns, which is when the hailstones rain down from heaven at both Armageddon and Haman Gog, right as all flesh is changed into spiritual bodies. Satan's angels, his role of Antichrist, and his one world system all being destroyed at that time, as you can see in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. And he, the true Christ, both King of kings and Lord of lords, the true rock that destroys the image of Daniel chapter 2, shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he, Satan that is to say, shall come to his end and none shall help him. With his one world system and his role of Antichrist destroyed, he'll be locked up in the bottomless pit until the thousand years are finished, after which he'll be cast into the lake of fire along with whoever chooses to follow him at that time. Everyone else goes into the eternity, the third world age.